AMD is ready to fight the war against NVIDIA. The GTA 6 hacker has been picked up and NVIDIA's GPUs uh, got slower on Windows. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. In today's top story, we're gonna be discussing a move, a shake and a bake, if you will, that AMD decided to pull off after NVIDIA announced their RTX 40 series GPUs. And it amounts to a price cut, a price reduction on the RX 6000 series. Now, this is likely a portion of current economic factors that are pushing GPU prices is further down, but also the timing does seem to indicate that AMD wants everybody to keep them front of mind as Nvidia is kind of pissing off the masses with their upcoming 40 series cards. So there are some really decent price cuts happening in this RX 6000 series. The top of the line 6950 XT is currently $150 off. The 6900 XT is $300 off, as well as price cuts pretty much across the board, as you can see in this chart right here. The 6400, not that much cheaper at 149, 6500 XT at 169, 6600 at 239, 6650 XT. That's a heck and steal at 299. And you can see even at the top end, that's 6900 XT for 700 bucks. Like that's where we were when the 1080 Ti came out. So that's, I mean, that's, it's like we're getting, it's like the prices haven't gone up at all. And if you, you like factor in inflation, that's, that's, that's cheaper, it's cheaper. That's that's how time and physics and money works. Well, just let me know. Do any of these current price reductions mean anything to you? Or is it something where you're just looking towards the November 3rd announcement of AMD's RX 7000 series that's gonna be hotly anticipated? I do think that GPUs and CPUs kind of have that differentiation where people won't necessarily wait for Ryzen 7000, which likely, if I had to guess, embargoes just went up for that. So like other tech YouTubers are going to have reviews on that. But that requires a whole like system swap. So waiting for that doesn't make as much sense if you can get a good deal now. But with GPUs, why buy now when buy later when better come out? Who knows? Let me know what you think down below in the comments. And speaking of those Ryzen 7000 chips that I am expecting to get announced simultaneously with hot news going live, we at least have some benchmarks coming out before they're supposed to. So I can talk about those and it looks like they're good. The 7000 series is about as good as AMD has been pitching it in in terms of single threaded and multi threaded performance compared to its predecessor. As you can see here in Cinebench scores, the 7950X absolutely demolishing when it comes to multi core score. Even the 7900X beating the 5950X when it comes to multi threaded score performance, thanks to that clock speed uplift. Holy crap, AMD coming out swinging. But we're also having some size off Sandra benchmarks, which give more comparison between AMD and Intel. And you can see here that something like the 7600X goes actually toe to toe with the 12600K very nicely, but does smack the 5600X in the face. The 7950X absolutely wrecking when it comes to just being the top performer in these arithmetic native benchmarks, as well as other benchmarks. 7950X looking to be a very strong performer. The 12 900K does put up some significant numbers in specific benchmarks, but for the whole, it looks like AMD has a good handle on being the top chip in the market. However, uh, it's just according to reports, we're getting the Intel announcement tomorrow for the 13th gen. So AMD's time at the top might be short lived. AMD's competing with what is essentially going to be a defunct generation at this point. And I'm excited to see it. I, I really want to see where this CPU battle waits out and where the war is fought and how it's gonna go down because it hopefully can only benefit the consumer unless they conspire together to screw over all of our wallets, which I would not like. And I don't like this next thing I have to tell you. I'm gonna break some bad news to you. So come in kids, listen closely. The Artemis One launch is getting delayed yet again, and this is because of a tropical storm right now, likely to become a category three hurricane at some point. Tropical Storm Ian pushing back the Artemis launch date, which was supposed to happen tomorrow, September 27th. And NASA's had a really tough time with this launch with some hydrogen, liquid hydrogen leaking out, them fixing the seals on that. And then they were supposed to launch tomorrow, but again, the storm. So this likely pushes the launch to the October 1st or October 2nd timeline. And if they do not launch by October 5th, they miss the current window to get to the moon. But thankfully, the moon comes back every like month. And so what well, November second half of November is when we're going to try again on that on that if they can't get it in this current launch window. But NASA's not the only one missing their launch. It is now 
Kind of official that uh, Intel has missed the launch on their ARC A770 GPUs or their high-end GPUs, the limited edition graphics as they were, because they said that they were coming summer 2022. They also at one point said it was coming in Q1 and Q2, and now summer, which has officially passed on by, ends Friday, September 23rd. The summer's over. Maybe they meant Southern Hemisphere summer, which I'm sure Reese can inform us a little bit more of, but it does seem like Intel significant delays when it comes to these GPUs. However, video cards reporting on the fact that we do seem to have review embargoes known at this point. It looks like at the end of this month, September 30th, we should get an unboxing embargo at 9 a.m. And then on October 5th, we actually should get the review embargo come up. So it does look like the A770s are going out, which does according to the, the, the giveaway winners who won them from the scavenger hunt that Intel did a little while back, they are starting to receive their A770 GPUs. So Intel's like two weeks late from summer for that launch. They're they're trying, they're working their best. They've had some hiccups and some bumpsies in the roads. And according to some reports, they're dead entirely. So it's kind of amazing that they're still shipping graphics cards. And it's kind of amazing that I'm still shipping crypto stonks because mining's dead and I don't really, you guys still watch it. I don't understand. But Bitcoin down just to scoochie boochie down to 18, 8, 8, 6, 8, 1. That's a lot of eights. Ethereum down 0.6% to be at 1308 and Dogecoin down 1.85% to be at 6.1 cents. And speaking of scoochie boochies, Reese, my scoochiest boochiest boy, what do you have for UFD deals today? Hey everyone, welcome back to UFD deals. We bring you the hottest tech deals out on the internet. I hope you guys had a good weekend. I had an amazing time at Comic Con. I'm a little sunburned from it. As you can see, I'm a little bit more tomato mode, but I won't keep you guys from the deals any longer because we've got Team Group back with their T-Force Delta RGB DDR5 RAM kit. This 32 gig kit running at 6,000 megahertz is currently going for only $231.99. So that's $148 off, 39% off, and the lowest price in 30 days. And then secondly, one I'm excited for is the Epos Sennheiser GSP302 gaming headset. This amazing little headset is going for only $29.97, which is $49.03 off, 62% off and the lowest price in 30 days. For this price, you can honestly buy two just so you can throw one at the wall. But don't forget, you can find these deals and more linked in the video description. I'm hand you guys off back to Brett for the rest of your daily hot news. Cheers. Bye, donkey. Lekker manana. All right, let's talk about another thing that people are not gonna find so lekker is that uh, Fitbit is gonna be forced to use Google login starting in 2023. In case you don't remember, Fitbit was acquired by Google in 2021 for $2.1 billion. And so Fitbit is gonna start integrating with the Google ecosystem. 2023 is when they're gonna start forcing the sign up on Google. But if you have a current existing Fitbit account, you won't be required to switchy switchy on over until 2025. You'll just experience support degradation the lack of feature sets that only come to the people who actually signed up for Google and just a general sense that your life is doomed and uh, multinational corporations are gonna rule the world. Just something like that. Speaking, multinational corporations ruling the world. Let's talk about Disney and what they're doing to James Earl Jones. They're preserving his voice as Darth Vader forever by making it AI using a company at the current moment called Respeacher. But James Earl Jones is announcing that he's retiring from the voice of Darth Vader, something that he's played for over 45 years. And it's a Ukrainian startup that uses a proprietary AI algorithm to reconstruct the voice and make it sound all Darth Vader-y as it once was at some point. And it being revealed that in the latest Obi-Wan TV show that actually a lot of the voice performance was done by the AI rather than James. Earl Jones himself, and that's why he feels confident signing off the role, which kind of want you guys to have a discussion about this. How do you feel about the digital reconstruction of artists and performers long after they're dead? I think in this instance, I'm more okay with it personally. This is just my opinion because he's alive and he can consent to it right now. He can actually say, yeah, I'm okay with you guys continuing to use my voice for however long you see the Darth Vader role playing out. I give you my full consent. You give me that fat stack of cash and we're all happy here. It's kind of gets into a gray area for me when they digitally reconstruct somebody who passed away and you're like, did, did you contact their estate? Who consented to this like performance? Like what is going on here? Uh, I'm not, it's kind of ambiguous using the dead. It's a little strange to me at that point. I'm sure legally, totally fine. Ethically, I think uh, the culture is gonna have big conversations happening. But if James Earl Jones is giving his consent before he passes, 
I, I mean, I can't say no, he, he's choosing to do it. I mean, I, I wouldn't say no to the mouse if they gave me a ton of money. And a ton of money, if you're uh, trying to hack from one of these organizations is what's gonna do you in because the GTA 6 hacker is reportedly been picked up by the London police. In case you don't remember or weren't paying attention to the news in the last week, GTA 6 had a major leak with tons of gameplay footage being shown, over 90 videos being leaked, and it was done by one person as far as what we knew, Rockstar immediately, number one, hiring new people to help them with security. And essentially it seems like th th their stance is that this can never happen again. And then number two, putting tons of resources and efforts into catching the person who did this. And it looks like that has happened. It's been a 17 year old hacker again in London. And it looks like this person had ties to the Lapsus group who hacked a bunch of companies earlier this year, the likes of Nvidia and Samsung and a bunch of other key players. See kids, it doesn't pay to just steal video games and leak them. It, the that people don't like that. And leaking officially Netflix showing off the fact that the prequel to The Witcher books and TV series is gonna be coming out on December 25th, The Witcher Blood Origin launching that day, as well as announcing the fact that The Witcher season three on Netflix is coming out in summer of next year. I'm excited for it. I was really hesitant about season one of The Witcher. Then I saw Henry Cavill as Geralt and I was like, I'm sold. This is actually really good. I've thoroughly enjoyed this. So I'm excited to see more of their IP. Also. The Witcher has an anime on Netflix and they did like, I knew it was coming out, but they didn't do promotion when it actually did launch. And so I found it randomly scrolling and I was like, what? This came out a month ago, watched it, thoroughly enjoyed it told Reese, he was like, I've been waiting for this to come out. When did this happen? Netflix, not properly promoting it. I've actually been enjoying a lot of the Witcher IP, which a lot of people, I'm not gonna talk about a specific article here, the cyberpunk anime, Edge Runners, that came out on Netflix. A lot of people have been enjoying that. And it's led to a resurgence of cyberpunk as far as the game being played with its all time high, hitting over 110, 113,000 was the last number that I saw beating the all-time high record of The Witcher 3 on Steam, which was just over 100,000. So Cyberpunk experienced a resurgence in the patches that they fixed. They added new content, they fixed a lot of bugs, they made it a lot better, uh, especially on the lower end stuff. Kind of was never super buggy on my system, but that's because I was always playing it on an RTX 3080 or higher. But let me know, are you enjoying Cyberpunk more and more? Did you get back into it after you watched Edge Runners? I wanna hear from you down below in the comments, but in case you're trying to play that on an NVIDIA graphics card, you're on Windows 11 and you upgraded the second half 22 update, you might be experiencing some slowdowns. There's some bugs, stuttering issues that's been going on according to official reports out there. I talked about last week how this was supposed to be better for gaming and then when it actually launched, it made everything worse for NVIDIA cards specifically. And now NVIDIA has come out with an experimental beta patch for this in case you want to try to fix it you can get it in the latest geforce experience in order to do it it's kind of stupid that you'd have to do that rather than getting it through a driver where you do, the geforce experience requires you to log in but in case you want the fix now don't be on windows 11 easy peasy just use linux Ah, and now let's go ahead and talk about a few more details that NVIDIA has rolled out about their RTX 40 series. One of the complaints that a lot of people have been bringing out about the RTX 4080 12 gig is that it's based on a typical GPU die that would be reserved for a 70 class card. So IE the RTX 4070, but NVIDIA revealing more details that might kind of help swing the narrative just a little bit on that. I'm gonna open this up for discussion, but NVIDIA revealing that the 8104 die has 35.8 billion transistors. You compare that to the GA102 die, which you would find on something like the RTX 3090 Ti, and that only has 28.3 billion transistors. So the 8104 die, the GPU, the RTX 4080 12 gig, has more transistors than the RTX 3090 Ti, meaning it's a bigger, functioning card, whether or not transistors is the metric by which you measure the capacity of GPU, that's up to you. But if you look at previous precedent of what a 70 class card would be, something like the GA104 or the RTX 3070, you can see right here that it has 17.4 billion transistors, which is actually smaller than what was on the RTX 2080 Ti, the TU102 at 18.6 billion transistors. So by transistor count alone, you would expect the 70 class 
class card to have fewer than the previous generation flagship. And that's actually what would be happening in the 40 series generation and is not happening with the RTX 4080 12 gig. That is still bigger than the previous generation's flagship. Again, this is just something to help measure it out. It doesn't necessarily translate. We'll have to wait for third party reviews, making sure that these GPUs are actually good. Does the RTX 4080 12 gig beat out the 3090 Ti? We'll have to wait and see. And you won't have to wait to see my face any longer because let's go watch another video. We released the GTA 4 remastered ray trace video. Check that out. And we'll see you back here for hot news tomorrow.